Welcome back. All right, so rounding out the season previews, we finished with the Calgary Flames. And the Calgary Flames, I saved for last for a simple reason. Uh, I don't think they're done, and yet, here we are. We are a couple of weeks away from the start of training camp. We're a month and a half from the start of the regular season. And outside of the Toffoli trade, things have stayed kind of the same. And so we're still in this holding pattern with both the Jets and the Flames. And we'll see what ends up happening with these teams as the uh, off-season rolls along, right? So, for the Flames, it was a disappointing season. 38, 27, and 17. They finished 16th overall. The 17 really stands out. Overtime shootouts, forget about it. And there were times during the regular season where I just felt like their heart wasn't in it. Where when teams were, you know, making their best to push for a playoff spot, Calgary just didn't seem as interested. Now, of course, what came out after was... There was a lot of issues between Daryl Sutter and some key members of the team. So Daryl Sutter, gone in the offseason. I think the plan in Calgary, and again, just based on what we're seeing right now, this team hasn't made the moves that I think they probably would need to. I think they're hoping that they have a good regular season and they can talk the pending UFAs into sticking around. Saying, hey, we're building something here. And at the very least, they've hired both popular coach and a popular general manager. So by... Bringing in a couple of popular, personable guys in Huska and Conroy. And Huska's been around this team. He knows these players. I think that can only benefit them. But at any rate, they scored 3.15 goals per game. They allowed 3.01. The overall numbers aren't awful. In fact, they were one point ahead of what Florida had in the Eastern Conference. Their power play, 19.8%, which definitely needs to improve. Their penalty kill was very good, 82.6%. One hallmark of Daryl Sutter teams over the years seems to be that he coaches defense well. Uh, now with Huska as the coach, we'll see if the offense gets a little bit better. Uh, the, the one side of it, too, is that the goaltending needed to be better in Calgary this past season. So having happy goaltenders who are playing well is important. Uh, the last time they made the playoffs, of course, 2022. That was also the last year they won a round. They knocked out Dallas before losing against Edmonton in the second round. And there was some optimism that, you know, we were going to see the two Alberta teams be good for a while. We get back into the Battle of Alberta year after year, and it just hasn't worked out that way. At least this past year, it looks like, you know, maybe Calgary's going to have a harder time keeping up than the Oilers. Uh, the only Stanley Cup in Calgary's history, of course, is 1989. Uh, that is getting further and further in the, rear, in the rear view mirror. They'd like to add another, right? Uh, they don't have cap space. That's going to affect what they do going forward. Uh, their ability to improve things on this team is is hampered by the fact that they don't have the cap space. So if they trade a player out, it's going to have to be dollar out, dollar in, right? And the fact that about half the league is in the same situation where there's just no cap space to make a deal, that is part, I would think, part and parcel of why they haven't made the big deals that maybe they'd like to, maybe players would like to get traded out. But again, uh, here we are, it's August 27th as I'm recording this, and we haven't seen a lot of movement outside of Toffoli, who was their leading scorer last year, being traded to the Devils. 82 games, 34 goals, 39 assists, 73 points. He's in the final year of his contract, and it was a career year. So for Toffoli, he gets traded out. It's another key guy for the Flames that leaves, uh, which is becoming a bit of a narrative, and they don't want to lose Lindholm. Lindholm played 80 games, 22 goals, 42 assists, 64 points. Bit of a drop from where he was the year before, but again, you know, for Calgary, everything just seemed to be a bit out of sorts. Maybe the change behind the bench will help that. Uh, Nazem Kadri, 82 games, 24 goals, 32 assists, 56 points. Kadri, I thought, had a decent year, but that contract makes it look worse than what I thought it was. Uh, for Kadri, of course, he has to bounce back. The one thing is, as players get older, it is more difficult to bounce back. So we'll see if he actually does. Uh, Backlund, he's, in, he's on an expiring deal as well. It sounds like he wants to stay, though. The discussions over the summer he's had with the press would seem to indicate that he'd like to stay in Calgary. 82 games, 19 goals, 37 assists, 56 points. At the very least, he sounds like the most likely of the three between himself, Lindholm, and Hannafin. Uh, Huberto had a down year. There's no other way to frame it. 79 games, 15 goals, 40 assists, 55 points. It is a very expensive contract for, Huber for Huberto. It's a contract that the Flames may regret. He has to have that bounce back year so that regret gets kicked down the road. So for Huberto, I would say he has to bounce back to, what, 90 points? Not, for, for the amount of cap hit that he has, I would think a 90-point season is necessary, anything less than that, and we'll definitely hear a lot more criticism of that contract. Though it's going to be there anyways, right? 
Uh, when you sign a guy to a long-term contract who's in his late 20s, getting into his 30s, there's a tremendous amount of risk with that. There are players who play very well into their mid-30s, but it's rare and very often players, you'll see that drop in play when they're in their early 30s. Uh, now on the goaltending front, it's interesting because again, we expected things to potentially change. Wolf looked excellent in the AHL, looks NHL ready, but it would appear that maybe we're going to have another year of the same tandem. So Markstrom, 59 games, 23, 21, and 12 record, 892 save percentage. Markstrom can be better than that, and he's had bounce back years before. He's being asked to have another. He's north of 30 as well. Uh, Vladar, 17, or 27 games, 14, 6, and 5 record, 895 save percentage. At times during the season, it looked like Vladar was going to be the starter, and then Markstrom would have a couple of good games, but the, the consistency just wasn't there in net. So both Vladar and Markstrom need to have bounce back seasons. And then there's Wolf, who came in towards the end of the year, played one game, he won it, and he had a 958 save percentage in that game. So, yeah, uh, we'll see if Wolf ends up playing for the Calgary Flames or playing for the Wranglers. I'm thinking he's going to end up with the Wranglers for another season because not being able to move Markstrom and Vladar, that's probably how it's going to work out. Uh, again, Wolf absolutely dominated at the AHL level. If he can do that in the NHL, he'll be a very good goaltender, and we'll hear about how short he is every game. So the hits leader for Calgary was Mackenzie Weger with 186 hits this season. I thought he had a decent season again. When you have that really expensive contract, it causes a lot more scrutiny of your play. I thought Weger was better than some of the, the reports that were out there. Uh, Rasmus Anderson led and blocked shots with 130 posts. Uh, Elias Lindholm hit 11 posts this past season. So if he can cut those in half and hit the net that much, he gets that much closer to 30 goals. And I think he can bounce back to 30 goals. And I think he can bounce back to 75 to 80 points. And he's going to need to if Calgary's going to stay above the playoff line in the West. Uh, the next one, I'm going with Wolf. Again, based on his play with the, uh, the Wranglers, the fact that in his draft year, he dropped just because he was shorter. Uh, all the scouting reports seem to be, yeah, he's a really good goalie, but he's not as tall as we like, so I wouldn't recommend we draft him, which is something that is is definitely an issue for a goaltender. I feel bad for goalies now that are 5'11 or shorter. You could be absolutely fantastic, and scouts are still going to go, eh, but they can hit the top of the net on him. So if you have a goaltender that's six foot five and can't cover the top of the net because of mobility issues, they say, well, he has a hard time covering the top of the net, but he'll figure that out. Meanwhile, you've got a 5'11 guy who's covering the top of the net perfectly fine, and they go, eh, at least he's 5'11. So hopefully Wolf is, is the next one, and I think he can be. Uh, for Fantasy Sleeper, I went with Coronado. Coronado debuted with the team late last year. Uh, projects to be a pretty solid player, and I think, you know, if there's injuries, and there's usually injuries on any roster... Coronado could move up and score a bunch of points. Uh, for the MVP, I'm going with Huberto. Why? If this team's going to bounce back and get back above the playoff line, and if they're going to contend, Huberto has to have that bounce back season. If he doesn't, I don't know that there's a whole lot, a whole lot of hope there because who else would be that MVP, right? Anderson, Markstrom. Like, again, you're counting on bounce, a bounce back season for Markstrom for him to get there. So I went with Huberto. You guys can let me know your thoughts on that. But with the amount of players that have gone and with the additions being, you know, Sharon Govich isn't going to be your MVP. Toffoli was last year, but Toffoli's gone. So, yeah, I went with Huberto. The schedule's tough out of the gate. Uh, six out of nine are on the road to start the season. One side of that, too, though, of course, is when you start the season on the road or you've got a bunch of road games to start the season, you don't have that pressure from the home crowd, so we'll see how it all balances out for Calgary. Uh, the channel vote would seem to be on the side that things are going to be tough this year in Calgary. 3% said first or second, 32% said third or fourth, so that's 35% of the channel uh, that feels they're likely to be a playoff team. 56% uh, said fifth or sixth, 9% said seventh or eighth. I don't think they'll fall as low as seventh or eighth because that would put them behind Anaheim or San Jose to get there because Anaheim, San Jose, very likely to be seventh or eighth in the division. But it's it's not going to be easy for Calgary. This is this is going to be a, an interesting season in that having that bounce back. And again, you know, they finished with more points than Florida, but the 17 losses and overtime and shootouts, and then just all the uncertainty around this team. Be interesting to see how it goes. So the exits, the aforementioned Tyler Toffoli. Michael Stone retires, takes a role with the team in development. Uh, Lucic, of course, goes back to Boston. Lewis goes back to the LA Kings. 
Uh, Nick Ritchie still out there as a UFA, as far as I know. And on the addition side of it, with them not having cap space, Sharon Govich comes in in the Toffoli deal, and uh, Jordan Osterley comes in for depth on the blue line. So have they improved their on-ice roster? I don't think so, but again, you're calling on guys like Peltier to come in, Coronado to come in, and help to fill that void with some of the guys leaving the team. So we'll see how it all turns out. So when you're looking at UFAs next summer, you've got Backland, Lindholm, Hannafin. I've talked about them, but they're not the only ones. Tanev, huge. I, I'd love to have him back in Vancouver. If And again, I understand he's a lot older than he was, but I take him back in the bottom two. Um, Zadorov, good physical defenseman. Uh, Shillington. Shillington is supposed to be coming back and playing this year. I believe he missed all of last season. So if he comes back and helps on the blue line, that could be a boost for them as well. Uh, especially, you know, with Stone retiring, if you get Shillington back, you'd have to think that's roughly about equal in terms of impact. Uh, they have missed the playoffs in five of the last nine seasons. So they've had a couple of very good seasons, but in general, Calgary hasn't quite lived up to the hype for the most part. I know in the Canadian division is a good example. Uh, the 2020-2021 season, it was shocking just how mediocre they were through most of that season. And again, this year, they just didn't quite measure up, whereas the previous year, they looked great. So it's a matter of Calgary finding that consistency. There's a good team here, but they've managed to fall short uh, plenty of times in recent history. Uh, so yeah, Husk is in his coach, Conroy's in his GM, and we'll see what kind of impact that has. You have to have an environment where players want to play, players want to stick around. And so Calgary's trying to foster that and trying to talk some veterans into sticking around rather than exiting. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below regarding the Calgary Flames. Uh, does Hannafin end up going through training camp and starting the season with the Flames, or will they work something out between now and then? What about Lindholm? And what about Backland? And of course, all the others as well. If this team gets off to a slow start, and if it's clearly obvious that they just don't have it, we could see massive changes happen uh, right around the trade deadline. So they'll be fascinating to watch. It's part of the reason I kept them for last. Also, all the question marks that are still out there. We just don't know at this point, but it definitely looks like right now we've got training camp in two weeks. Odds are the guys who we were expecting to get traded that didn't probably still don't, but I'll be here to report on it if and when they do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.